Welcome back, everybody. Today, I thought we would go through a passage of scripture and then ask some very simple questions based on that scripture. Now, I'm not going to give you the answers. Um, that's for, for you to do. But this is a good way of beginning to draw out what a passage means. And uh, I found this useful and um, it will help you as well, I believe. Uh, so I want to pass this this along if you're not if you're not already doing this. And today's uh, scripture that we're going to look at is from John 17. It's the first five verses of John 17. And a bit of context here: Jesus has finished the upper room discourse with his disciples. Judas Iscariot has been exposed as a betrayer, though only Jesus and Judas knew what that conversation was about. And the, Jesus and the disciples, the remaining 11, have left the upper room, and Jesus is offering to God this uh, prayer. This is where he prays before he's arrested, um, with Judas showing the way to Christ, but not, <laughs> not to eternal life, of course. Um, anyway, so I'm going to read these first five verses of John 17. And then I'm going to ask some very simple questions that you can answer uh, for yourself. Now, this is from the English Standard Version. I've turned off the verse numbers. I find those distracting. And here we're just going to look at this uh, first paragraph of John 17. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. All right. So we're going to look at um, some very simple questions here and see if we can draw out anything from the text. So all these questions pertain to this passage. According to this passage, what was Jesus' purpose on earth? The Father gave the Son authority over all flesh, is all flesh the same group to whom Jesus gives eternal life? On what condition does the Son give eternal life? What is eternal life as defined by Jesus in this passage? The Son gives eternal life to as many as the Father gives him. Where else in John have we seen this exact concept, that the Son gives eternal life to those the Father has given him. And finally, did Jesus finish the work that the Father gave him to do on earth? So there's six simple questions. These are going to be down in the description, and I'm going to pin a comment from me uh, that also has these questions just to make sure everyone sees them uh, in writing. But another, another tool that I use when I'm looking at a passage like this is to go to another uh, translation and read it again. So this is the English Standard Version. This is a critical text-based um, translation. Let's go to a Textus Receptus, Textus Receptus-based translation. That's actually kind of hard to say. Anyway, this is the New King James Version. Um, I would give the New King James the edge over ESV as far as being my favorite. Um, but there's things about the ESV I like very much. Anyway, so let's read the King James Version and then keep in mind those questions. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. 
I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Now you can pick your your favorite translation to read this in again yourself on your own time and uh, just consider those questions. And what I also find helps me is I write out my answers. Um, I have a little notebook um, from Moleskine or Moleskine, depending on which side of that debate you're on. Um, a notebook that I use um, for uh, my, my, the sermon notes I write down when I listen to uh, my pastor preach and then also my own personal study notes. I find it very helpful. Well, that's all for today. I hope you have a great day in the Lord.